Hi, it's been a while. It hasn't really been a while, I think. I think it has. So, I'm in my room. Once again, I really love this room. I love that I have a space of my own after 23 years. It's just, yeah. I love having a space of my own. But I also love living with my family, so that's why, where possible, I don't think I would ever want to get an apartment of my own. I'd always want to live with someone. I like this whole idea of being alone, but, you know, having someone by your side as well at the same time. So it's more of just, you know, like two quiet people in a room together just doing their own thing, but you know the other person is there if you ever need them but you do your own thing nonetheless so yeah, alone but together so like traveling overseas with a friend maybe you guys want to look at stuff on your own and you arrange to have a, a meeting point afterwards that makes everything easier that being said, I have these non-stop thoughts of just killing myself again they've been growing in frequency sorry that I'm not very eloquent these days I have stopped reading and I've stopped writing as well just somehow I lost interest in the two things I used to revolve my um, life around I stopped writing because I don't have time I stopped reading because I'm now a librarian, well at least that's my official job title, but I stopped reading because I now associate it with work and I don't like to go into the library anymore. So yeah, it's just um, really fucking up things that I used to associate with uh, relaxation and enjoyment, but I can't avoid that because reading is very essential to this job, it's just that I don't find it fun anymore and also being away from uni being away from classes it's it's like I stop forcing myself to be uh, to put my thoughts into words just to string together sentences in the most um, elegant way possible so that could explain the you know a lack of uh, the lacking eloquence in my speech these days not that I was very eloquent before but I do think I was more at least more coherent before um, yeah so I don't know why, why I turned this on I guess I had a couple of things to say I discovered Mystic Messenger it's an Otome game and Otome games are really fun and having a real kick out of playing it I bought a ukulele, or is it ukulele? How do you pronounce it? Ukulele by most people, ukulele I think I heard by someone. Anyway, I bought that instrument and I can't play it really, but I've been looking up out of, well then I don't know music theory or anything, so what I'm really doing is just looking up YouTube videos and then I see how people play certain songs and then I try to try to mimic that without any understanding of the notes or anything. So I'm learning it from a very, uh, in a very technical way, I think. Mm. And I'm not the best when it comes to doing things with my hands, so that's been a bit of a challenge. But I just like knowing that it's sitting in my room, and that I can touch the strings anytime I want, I can strum them. I love the sound that it makes, that a ukulele makes. I think it's one of the prettiest sounds in the world. Uh, so the model I got is a, is a Greg Bennett UK50. I think it's just friendly for beginners like me, or people who are just picking this up as a casual hobby. Yeah, so... And uh, other things... Yeah, so I'm worried about this job and... Uh, I'm just worried in general, you know, I don't know what's in store for me in the future. I am going to bed every day anxious about the presentations uh, that I'll have to do in time to come. I have to do storytelling 
mass storytelling sessions at schools. So that's like 200, 300 people at once in an assembly hall trying to tell, you know, be this animated storyteller. And I, I'm no good with being animated. I don't know. It's just not me. Um, I have to deliver talks to parents as well in an assembly hall. I'm worried about the hot weather. And you know, like I said, I have hyperhidrosis that doesn't make public speaking easy at all. And now I have to do it in really warm, humid conditions. Um, a lot of these things and, and book talks and all that. Yeah, so. Yeah, we'll, we'll think about it. I don't know. I'll, I'll see where that goes. I think that's probably the most challenging part of this job. Uh, the public speaking. And then there's also projects and programs. Uh, I don't know. It's actually okay. This job is okay. I'm just whiny. <laughs> this is whiny because I didn't get accepted by my first choice. And technically this was my first choice until I recently found out after five weeks of being here what a drag it can be to go to work. Um, well, it's not a drag, but it's just not what I had in mind. I just... Yeah, I'm just sour about not getting my first choice, which was uh, teaching. But I also think it's just because I like interacting with the students. I just like, I don't know why I like talking to them. I do get something out of it too. I like that they're just so sincere and they're so unfiltered. Um, but yeah, I won't get to do that as a, you know, for a living until maybe next year when I apply again. And I'm also looking into nursing. Um, so yeah, I'm only five weeks in. I know definitely I'll probably stay on at this job for another year or so until a new opportunity pops up. And then I'll consider making the switch. Um, yeah. Definitely with teaching, I'm very sure about it. But with nursing, I'm... Not as sure as I am with teaching, but I am definitely more sure about that than I am with this job. I just feel like the skills I'm picking up aren't very... I don't know what's the word for it. I don't care so much about being an effective storyteller as I care about being, you know, a teacher who is able to communicate the material or a nurse who was able to care for her patients. Somehow it just seems more trivial. But I, I don't know, so I guess it's about challenging yourself to be better at the job. If you do find the job meaningful in some way, it doesn't have to be the best job in the world, it just has to be. It doesn't have to be your passion either, but if you just find it meaningful somehow, you'd want to take more challenges that come your way. I just don't really feel like that with this job right now. I just don't think I will come to feel um, this way for it. Okay, so we will think about it. I mean, I will think about it. I'm half asleep at work all the time. My brain's just gone. What I really want in this lifetime is just to take on some lame admin job, you know, where I just like look at an Excel file and do data entry and check facts and stuff like that, I mean, and get paid and then I go home and then I don't have to bring home my laptop or be expected to answer any emails from work or coordinate events or plan them. Or work on weekends or I don't know I just want a fixed nine to five but a nine to five job here is a luxury our hours seem to be more like 8 30 to 6 30 um, but I, I would like that regular nine to five and just I just want to be able to go home and not have to associate myself with the work I'm doing you know like past a certain point I just want to come home and live in my headspace. I have this 
I'm always, whenever I come home, I just have things to do all the time because I have so many fictional universes in my head that I'm exploring at any given point in time or activities. Well, I used to enjoy reading, but now I don't <laughs> because it's all part of work. And uh, I think I mentioned this in my previous video log entry, which is that I, since I'm in charge of children's and teens, I can't read adult fiction, which is really my favorite type of fiction, and I, even as a child or a teenager, I only ever looked at the adult shelves. Um, yeah, well, I can't do adult fiction right now without feeling like I should be looking at children's and, um, uh, children's lit or young adult, uh, fiction. Yeah, so there's all that. Uh, I don't know, and also seems like the librarians who do really well as, as all these, like, at this job at least, they seem to be more of communications people, like, they majored in communications, because this job is heavy on marketing and communication skills, and, um, people skills and events management and events planning very heavy on events and promotional activities really and uh, which I knew when I went in I guess I did enough research I I knew it was part of it but I didn't realize it was such a this makes up like 70% of the job I think or 65% I think I should be going to sleep, but I guess the point I wanted to say was I have been such a cruel person So I got my first ever salary And I gave a uh, part of it to my mom and my dad For my mom it was actually expenses that I owed her from my Korea trip I borrowed a sum from her And so I paid her back With my dad likewise um, So really I didn't really give them an allowance It was more of just clearing debts in a sense but starting from next month onwards I do want to give them an allowance which is each parent will receive 10% of my income um, so that's 20% of my income that I will be funneling back to my parents and I can do this because I guess I care about them a lot and um, yeah, I know, I know, for some people it's a, it's an obligation, from time to time I feel like it is too, and that's why I don't like about myself, there are periods where I just think about it, and I'm like, I work so hard for the money, I get stressed out and everything, so I don't understand why sometimes I feel like my mom and dad look at me like I'm just someone who's there to take care of their retirement. I think that's what they really mean when they say that they they don't want me to go so soon. It's not my company or anything. I mean, you can get that from my brother. He's arguably a more enjoyable presence than I am. So I feel like it's really just because I'm an investment and I should be around to take care of them in the long term. It's probably not the only concern I'm aware of, but it's one of the main concerns. So I don't know, I guess I'll work, and for now, it'll be 10% per parent, and then when I kill myself, they can just get everything, so I hope to save enough and make sure that, um, at least, even in death, at least, I do set aside a sum for them. It won't be a lot, and it definitely won't be enough, and I'm so sorry about that, but, yeah, at least it's, it's not, it's not nothing, I guess. I'm thinking about where to kill myself, and I think Seoul would be a really good option. I'm trying to plan out the dates as well, so right now the timeline as it goes, it's if, um, if I fail the teaching interview again, which will be held in March next year, and it can take up to two months for you to get a proper response, or even more than that, I've heard some people i uh, wait for like eight months before anything's confirmed. 
so we'll see how that goes. I'll, I'll hold on and wait. If it's a rejection from them, then I will kill myself. Oh, if this job itself gets too stressful and I don't want to deal with public speaking anymore and, I don't know, just working with problematic individuals who like to push tasks or, sorry, I'm just, who like to push tasks around and, um, you know, not want to do their part or help other people, then okay. You know, I'm done with them. I got up from bed, so maybe that's why my voice sounds different from this mark onwards. I'm just tired of it, you know. I... I just don't have a backbone. I don't have the grit or the resilience to want to persist. And every day I look into the mirror and I get so tired of having to exist in my physical form. I am so incredibly ugly. <laughs> it's just so tiring to look at my reflection in the mirror. I hate my hair. I hate my skin. I hate the shape of my body and everything. Sometimes I think about it, I just want to crawl out of my skin. Crawl out of everything, you know. Only then will I feel free. Suffocating. To walk around in this body and feel like. You know, I don't know how to explain it. It's just. I don't like it. <laughs> don't like it. It's so mild. I hate it more like. I've always wanted to destroy it. But the impulse only got stronger over the years. I have a meeting tomorrow, so I should be sleeping, and it takes me at least an hour plus just to get to the office every day. So that's two hours of my waking. Two of my waking hours spent traveling back and forth. I'm not really crying. Okay, I guess I am, but it's more because... I struggle to talk about things without tearing up. I keep thinking I'll oh, hold on until I get something better or until things get easier, but they really don't. <laughs> Being employed is hard. Being unemployed was also hard. Um, and today my dad just told me, where possible, don't quit. You know, don't quit this job. And I want to say, yeah. Of course. And I know my mom just wants me to do a regular proper job that someone with my educational qualifications would. So I don't think she'd be in favor of me quitting as well. And I think for the most part what they are happiest about is the pay. Yeah, because the pay is at least, um, I don't know, it's way higher than I thought I would get. But I don't really care about the pay. <laughs> Just care about having some alone time. I don't spend a lot by default. My only weaknesses are things like bubble tea, which I guess can be quite costly after a while. But I don't spend a lot. I don't really like to shop. I don't really like to buy stuff for people as well because I feel like half the time you know, you're better off just giving them a voucher and then they can spend that kind of money on themselves. Um, I know I sound heartless and, and so thoughtless right now, but unless I absolutely know what someone wants and it isn't a ridiculous request and is within my spending range, I don't really like to shop for people at all. I don't like to shop for myself. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, so I don't know, I have all these ideas, I just want to go to Seoul sometime in April or May. I'll, what I'll probably do is I'll work in this meantime, save enough money, and then inform my employees of my resignation, 
at least a month before so that I don't um, burn any bridges or maybe I'll just leave I don't know I don't know as and I don't know if I'll be in the right state of mind to do everything to execute this entire plan logically because the thing is when I leave I don't have int any intention to come back but a part of me always wants to live on part of me thinks of you know crying out for help really and someone responding to that but I also am not curious enough to see what will happen after that because I've been through this for long enough and I know it doesn't get better it really doesn't <laughs> Well, I guess we'll see what will happen in time to come. Maybe I'll be... Maybe I'll be fine. Maybe I won't talk about killing myself so much anymore. Next year. But I don't know. This is what... This entire... Ever since I started even posting uh, video entries to this channel, the number one topic has always been suicide always thinking about it always looking up methods researching them and uh, this time I guess this time I'm serious I don't know I really don't plan to live beyond beyond 30 at all so the most I can say is I plan to go at 27 because four more years should be enough for me to decide whether or not I really want to be a part of this universe. When so little excites me. So little excites me because I can't seem to find pleasure in the things that, are, that were previously pleasurable. Now I sound like WebMD giving you a diagnosis on depression. <laughs> Um, but aside from that, there's also this overwhelming, I don't know, grief or emotional torment and suffering for something. I don't know what it is, I really don't. Like, I don't know. Like, for instance, um, it's the little things that really that just build up it's sad thinking about people about people I'd like to be friends with people I'd like to reach out to and never do or somehow we drift apart very naturally just the way it is, I guess. I don't know. This has gone on for long enough. I'll turn it off. Um, we'll talk again some other time. Yeah, but for now, this is the plan. So, I plan to leave in April or May that would have been at least six months I assume for this at this job and uh yeah we'll see how it goes from there I'll buy some rope pack it into my luggage bag then I need to think about where to hang myself and I'm worried because I don't know if um Of where I'm headed will allow me to do that. Will I be able to hang myself in a motel room if I don't know what it looks like before that? So I need to do some research and practice on that.
I've looked at pictures of dead people, but that's not very helpful. Because, you know, it's how you're gonna hang yourself is just very specific to the room that you're in. Um, yeah, so. I need to think about oh, ways to tie the rope. Hanging from the tree, from a uh, tree, sorry, is probably the easiest thing I could do. But also with my weight, I mean, what if the fucking branch snaps or something? So I better go to a place with lots of thick and sturdy trees. Yeah, but definitely it's probably going to be hanging. <laughs> Part of me is so amused. Like, what are they gonna say at my funeral? What will my boss say at my funeral? She left me hanging. <laughs> so fucking retarded. I just like to turn this on because I feel. I feel less alone. <laughs> I don't know why I feel this all like frankly, it's just like I've said in my Tumblr blog, you just feel like okay, I'm screaming into the cyber void, into the cyber abyss. I want to be free. Actually, I don't know if I can say that. I am scared, to be honest. Worry about, let's say, let's say there really is something, such as the afterlife. That's really the last thing that I want. I don't want to be in an afterlife. I just want it all to end right here, right now. I am grateful for the life that I have lived, but I don't want any more of it. I don't want to be in someone else's body. I don't care if in the next life I am a rich, beautiful heiress or anything. I don't care. Frankly, I just don't want to know. I don't want to be alive at all, just hope it ends. Honestly, that's one of the fears or whatever that's holding me back. I'm just scared that I would just go on and on and on. You know, all we got, who knows, I could be. Um, I died today, I killed myself, I wake up as a child laborer or something. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know, it's just. Life is disgusting. This whole game of chance is disgusting. It's really weird. Do I get the same parents or do I get parents who are ridiculous? Do I come from a broken home? I don't know. It's not fair to anything. Really. You don't know what goes on afterwards. Oh, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. And I think when I'm about to kill myself, this will be the one concern I have is just, do I have to live again? Because <laughs> I really don't want to. I just want it to end, full stop. And to me, that sort of nothingness, I suppose you could call it freedom.